Hello and welcome back to Ice and Fire Season 2, I believe Episode 12, but I might be wrong. It has been a while since I've done any recording. And, um, well, a proper recording for an episode, that is. But we are back, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded much, but uh, if you haven't checked out my announcements, like the Community tab, and if you're a part of my Discord server, check the announcements there as well. That will explain a little bit of why I have been lacking in the upload. Uh, department but we are back now hopefully um i'm trying to get back into shape and in the last episode we did this we did some stuff with botania and um i thought i knew what i was doing but i didn't trust me i did not know what i was doing i kind of knew what i was doing but only like 30 percent um so today we will be setting up some more botania stuff but this time i know what i'm doing somewhat um and then in the next episode we will be taking a look at some dragon stuff because i think it is time we soon get to do some more dragon stuff, such as maybe get a dragon? We'll see. Um, I have something planned for the next episode, I of Fire related, so stay tuned for that. But today, we will be kind of wrapping, not wrapping up, but like getting to a good point where we can leave off with Botania for another time. Now, a quick note as well, in the last episode we made this AFK, well not really AFK, automated cactus farm. And uh, so far I have been doing some stuff off camera and it is working now. You may have seen that I have some stuff in my inventory and also this weird cobblestone thingamajingy over here. And that is because um, we are going to be setting up an automated mana generation system. Because we really need that in order to do more stuff with Batania. Um, so that is what we will be doing today. I have been setting up, I have been gathering stuff. And as you can see over here, the flowers actually died out. And this is the mana that we got from the last episode. I can actually now take this thing because we will be needing a bunch of them. Um, as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff in my inventory. And first things first, let, uh, let me show you how much mana we got from those two water flowers right there. Yeah, not a whole lot. As you can see right there on the bar, we barely have any. Um, and we need to set up a temporary system of getting some more mana because we need to get quite a lot of mana for this project right here. So, uh, the flower we used in the last episode was that water flower thing. I don't remember what it was called, but we are going to be making another flower this episode right here at the start before we continue on. And that's called the endo flame. And that basically takes burnable stuff that is around it, such as wood or coal, and turns it into mana. So that is one that we will be making really quickly before we continue. Um, so we need uh, uh, lag, okay, uh, gray, brown, and stuff. Now, one thing that you really want to make, by the way, if you're starting out with Batania, is um, not a zombie heart. You will be wanting to get, I believe I have it in here, yes, the flower pouch. Pretty easy to make, just some wool and any, like, pedestal or flower should do. Um... So yeah, baking this is really handy because it stores all your flowers, so you don't need to have them in your inventory. As you can see, there are some that I just don't have, but I have a bunch of others right here. Now, as I don't have any red flowers, we do want... Uh, what was it again? Wait, hold on. Uh, eh. This right here. So we need a mushroom and red dye. And for that, I have a bunch of red dye. Hopefully I have some mushrooms. If not, I know where to get some. I do not have any mushrooms, so I suppose I will be going to the nether for a really quick trip. I'll be right back. Um, what on earth is that? I think I'm being attacked. <laughs> what is that thing? That's new. Um... Hi. Strat hole. I don't know if I... Ow! Nope, I don't want to get close to that guy. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Th thanks for... Oh! Yeah, that's what you... Ah! Nope, nope, nope. Why is the nether... Why is modded nether always so not... Welcoming? It's not nice. <laughs> it's not nice at all. Oh boy, there's another one. Yeah, okay, I think that's my cue to leave. Um, there's not that many mushrooms here, actually. Um, kind of surprising. But you know what? It's fine. I, I got, like, yeah, 10. Oh, no. Eh, hi. Hi. Yeah, I got 10. You know what? That That's good. That's good. I'm going home. The hospitality of the nether is always so great. That's what I wanted to say. There's something along the lines of that. All right, let's move on, shall we? So, endo flame. We need two brown pedestals, one light gray, and one red for one endo flame. I'm thinking we make two for this. Um, 
I think. Wait, how how do we? Oh, I can use these instead. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> oh boy, mystical light gray flower. I need two. I think one of you. Yes. So one of you. Wait. Okay. So if I want to make twelve, not twelve, two. Okay. So I need then two brown flowers like so. So that is four. All right. So I believe first off we need to put in water, then one two that and that and then we add a seed to the mix and it's gonna be very loud boom and we have an endo flame i'm gonna make uh one more of that because we want to get some mana going to begin with all right so endo endo that's not endo this this that seed and we have two endo flames perfect all right so far so Good. So these, if we place this down, let's place one down here. Oh wait, it has to be on dirt, right? Let's put one here, right? And if we take this thing out, so we need one of these right here, the mana spreader. So I am going to place one facing this guy right here. And I think we need to place it down again. And there we go. It has bounded to this mana spreader right here. So I assume if I drop some wood, it should pick it up and convert it into mana. There we go. And this now has some mana in it. And we are now transferring mana to this mana pool. So I'm going to get a bunch of... All right, that has been tied to that as well. I'm going to get a bunch of coal, like maybe half a stack. We have plenty of it. So... Uh, cool. Okay, so I'm going to get a whole stack and I'm going to drop like 16 at a time. And hopefully that should be enough to get it going for quite a while, both of them. So that should get picked up slowly by both of them. We are definitely getting mana. So that is perfect right there. Now this is actually how we will be made be using this right here. So this is what we're making here. It's actually an automated tree farm using Botania. Right, so to begin, all this cobblestone needs to be, be, uh, be, be, they need to be replaced with these mana spreaders. And for that, I have been working off camera to get the living wood that we need um and then we need one petal for each of these so we need to have seven in total here so we already have one and two so we need 12 um of these things so i need 12 more petals meaning i really need a bigger inventory for this <laughs> what is the flower we have a lot of and what let's use the black um right one two so that's eight yeah, 12. All right, so mana spreader, boom, mana spreader, boom. And we need one over here because we need this one to be a pulse mana spreader. Hopefully all of this will make sense fairly soon. So basically now what we need, by the way, I will leave a link down below in the description on the video for the video that I actually used um, for this because I didn't figure this out myself. So firstly, we need to get rid of this cobblestone right here, and we need to replace it with these mana spreaders, but they need to be in a pattern. They need to link up with each other. So this one is firing. As you can see, it's firing that way, and this one is firing up. So now I need to place one here, firing this way, and then over here, one firing up, and then we need to make that one. No. I think you can tell the pattern. So that one should be facing this way and then over here that needs to be going up and then over and i think you get the point <laughs> so let me finish these up so that shoots into here up over up over up over and that continues all the way to the top all right i am now on to the final one that one is shooting over now we need actually to point that one um to that mana pool right there so i'm just gonna place it here nope wrong 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 place buddy right there and then i'm going to right click that and then that so now it is pointing down to this and i I think that is an okay vision, otherwise we will just have to move this thing. We are still getting mana. Um, 
I was just hoping to get a little more <laughs> than this. But uh, well, we'll just have to see where it goes. Um, now, you may be wondering why are we doing this? And we are doing it because we need to make this mana lens, which basically is something that we can put on these so that the beam in between breaks blocks. So that is what we need to make next. Now, here's the issue. For that, we need mana lenses, right? And for that, we need mana steel. And the way you get mana steel is by infusing it in a mana pool that has a lot of mana. We don't have a whole lot of mana. <laughs> so that's the issue right there. And that is why I wanted a bunch of mana. Um, yeah, that, that that's an issue. Now, as these are mana spreaders, we of course need some mana to spread it between them. This is why we have this mana pulse mana spreader. It will take mana from this pool and shoot it over to that one. But as you can tell, uh, it's a pulse. So for that, we need to make this hovering hourglass. And for that, we need two mana glass and one mana steel ingot. Um, so hopefully we can get that going. Firstly, I need to move you. Over here. There we go. All right. So I'm going to place this pulse mana spreader right here and I'm going to bind you to you. So you will be pulsing to that guy over there. Now the hourglass will be it's basically well a timer. So when the timer is done, it will pulse then it will reset the timer and then pulse again. We can try and go ahead and make the mana glass uh, because we do have mana over here quite a bit of it actually. So I think we just rub it in. And there we go. And it hasn't consumed all of it. Wow. Okay. We might actually be able to pull this off after all. <laughs> all right. So we have one mana steel ingot and two mana glass right here. Now, you know what? Just keep, keep producing. Um, now we can go ahead and make the hovering mana glass, except that I was a dumb man and forgot a piece of redstone. All right. There we go. Our glass. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna unbind this thing because I don't want it starting to pulse yet. So we put this here and then we basically put in 10 stacks of sand. And that, when that is kind of depleted, that should then make this pulse. Now I just hope it won't be wasting our mana. It seems like it did. So I'm gonna break you and then we'll place it down when we are ready for it. I hope I didn't lose any mana on that. I might have, but I'm not sure. But that is basically how that is going to work. The next thing is we need to make this, the mana lens four. And for that, I realized I need seven pistons in total and I need seven pieces of redstone and 14 pieces of lapis. So I will be right back with all that. All right, I have gotten what I need for it. Now we basically need to make the mana glass and the mana steel. I just hope that we have enough mana in total to be able to do this, but I kind of highly doubt it. But it seems like this thing doesn't deplete that much. Oh, it does though. I'm just going to drop that in there. And now we do not have any more mana left in order to make the iron ingot. We do have some, but not enough. So hopefully we can finish off with these 13 over here. But actually, that's enough. Not quite. We need to make the three uh, that is left right there. So I just, I'm just going to leave this to make some mana. But the thing that we need to make with these are the mana lenses, which we will then... Uh, wait, how do we make these? Oh. Okay, my bad. I thought you needed mana glass to make those. Um, whoops. Apparently, I just need normal glass for this. All right, I have the 28 mana steel right here. So we will now go ahead and make the mana lenses. One, two. Th oh, they don't stack. Oh my. Okay. Um, so now we need to go ahead and make the mana four. And apparently, that needs to. Okay. They don't stack. That's. <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? By the way, one equipment that you might want to make is a Mana Seer Monocle. I don't remember what it does, but I have it in here because I wanted to make it. And I think you can equip it in one of these slots, maybe? 
inner arts. And I think this allows us to see something. So it basically allows you to see the effective area of flowers. It also does two other things. It allows you also to see mana bursts, even if obscured by walls, and also the strength of a redstone signal. So that is really cool, actually. So you, you definitely want to... You definitely want to make that. All right, but with that now done, we need to now equip all these mana boards and we need to right click these mana spreaders right here. Those three. Eh. There we go. The ones pointing outwards. So I have four left, which is perfect. One here, one here. And next up, one there. Perfect. This is really starting to take shape. All right, so what do we do next? These mana spreaders have been equipped with the breaking lens thingy thingy i already forgot what it was called that will basically break the blocks that are in this area right here what we now want these lenses to do of course they will break the locks and then we want the locks to be picked up we will do that with a hubba hawk which is basically a flower that when powered by mana we can get well we could get picked up the items on the floor now the way we make this is a little bit interesting First of all, we will need a redstone root, which is the big deal. We can easily get that, but we will need a rune of air. Now, to make a rune of air, we will need the runic altar. And as you can see, a bunch of other things. And the runic altar is made from living rock, which we do have, but we need a mana diamond or a mana pearl, which we get from infusing it in a mana pool. Now, that's right there. Now, yes, the ender pearl takes a lot less than a diamond. Um, only issue is I do not have any ender pearls. <laughs> and it takes quite a lot of mana from what I can tell. So I might want to let it actually become nighttime and then hunt for an enderman. Um, because I would much rather use an ender pearl to save on the mana. Um, and also, it appears that I need some shears so I can get some grass as well. So I'll get all that and I will be right back with you when I have what we need. After a lot of searching, I finally got one. <laughs> so what we would need to do is just drop this in here. That was enough for that? Okay, you know what? I, I won't complain. I won't complain. There we go. All right, perfect. So with the mana pearl and five living uh, living rock, we will be making the runic altar. Now this will be needing mana as well. I don't know if it's enough to just place it next to it. Or if it's automatically tied or not, I'm not sure. It would appear that I do need a mana spreader for it. There we go. Um, I think, yes, that is sending to the runic altar. Perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to take the ingredients that we need to make a rune affair. Mana steel, mana powder, string, feather, and carpet. So let's get these four first. Um, okay, so any dye or gunpowder or redstone actually is turned into mana powder. And the most redstone, mana powder. Perfect. So we have that already. Now we just need the other stuff. All right, I should have everything. So... We need man of steel, got that. Yep, I got everything. So, I don't know if we right click. Yeah, we right click it on there. So, one white carpet, one feather, one string. And I believe it just starts doing its thing when we click the next thing. Yep, as you can see over there next to the arrow. And I think we click with the Wonder Forest. Or the hand okay and now know why we apparently need more living rock apparently you need to drop a living rock on it and then right click the living rock with your wand so i do need some more living rock so we will be making some more of that as well i thought you just had to click on it or it would finish on its own but nope all right click with the living rock and then click with the wand and boom we now have rune of air just gonna Drop all this unnecessary stuff in here for now. We will take these out because we do need to make some more living rock, which we will make right down here, I think. All right, now that we have our rune of air, we can now continue. So we need two light gray uh, pet petals and two gray ones and then redstone root. So we have the redstone root. 
Now let us see what kind of flowers we have. So, mystical light gray flower, I just need one. Mystical gray flower, I just need one as well. And I think that should do it. If we just convert these into petals, we only need one of this flower. So, let us go ahead, get some water in here. And I will need a seed to finish this off. So, two light gray, two gray, one redstone root, and then one rune of air, and then one seed, and we have our hopper hog. And then we will place that right next to the chest, except that it needs dirt to do that. Place the dirt, and then place the hopper hog. And as you can see, we have quite a large area to work with here, so that is perfect. Now, if we want this to only pick up one type of item, we can take an item frame, put it on the chest, and then put what we want um, this to pick up. Now, I'm actually going to relocate the chest because I think it will be in the way of our pulse guy over here. So, like so. Yep, it has passage over there. Perfect. So, uh, I now need an oak lock, and I need to sleep. All right, so I have some oak logs now. If we take the wand here and look on the flower, it says pick up only items and frames, and I have placed an oak log in there. So now, if we toss that down, we should, as you can see, fix it into the chest, which is exactly what we want. So far, so good. We need to move on to the next flower we need to make, which is the Ranon Carpus or something like that. <laughs> so. What this will do, this will basically be the flower that places down our um, our saplings. So, let's get to it. For that we need a rune of earth, and for that we need some sort of stone, block of coal, mushroom, oh boy, mana steel and mana powder. So mana steel and mana powder, easy, any type of stone here, block of coal, and a type of mushroom. Let me get all that. I'll be right back. Uh, eat the mushrooms. All right, I have gotten what I need. Uh, hopefully, this thing, Rune of Earth. Hopefully, stone is gonna count. So, well, let, let's start. Let's start putting stuff on there. Mushroom, this, that, block of coal, stone. Perfect, Rune of Earth. And we will be needing one liver rock. Living rock. <laughs> Put that on there, right like that, and we now have Rune of Earth. Perfect. And to make this flower, we need redstone root, uh, four orange pedestals because I actually petals. I actually want to make two of these guys and then two yellow, and I have zero yellow. Okay, that's an issue. It is a good idea to remember that you can make this floral fertilizer right here. You basically just need. I have a bunch of bone blocks in there, so what I did is I made a bunch of bone meal, but then I made a bunch of white dye, and then I made a bunch of floral fertilizer. So hopefully this gives us the stuff that we need. And as you can see, the flowers actually go into the flower pouch instead of my inventory, which is, yes, orange, perfect, which is exactly why that pouch is so wonderful. This is a lot of flowers in one place. All right, I think we have everything that we need. Except for two seeds that we need. All right, perfect. Let us go ahead and make that flower. Water, one yellow, two orange, one rune of earth, one redstone root, and then a seed. And we have the Ranon Carpus. <laughs> I think I'm saying that somewhat right. Maybe? I'm not sure. Anyways, two more orange. One that, one that, one that, and one seed, and we have these two right here. So, these of course also needs to be placed on dirt. So, place one here, and actually, huh, it seems that I only need one. Okay, so that's cool. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these guys, which we now have one too, too much of, um, they place stuff on the block that is two blocks under them. So I actually want to place mine here. So I'm just gonna be sure, or be safe rather, I'm gonna place dirt there because what will then happen? We have dirt here. Oh wait, actually, coverage seems to be like two layers. 
I'm a little bit confused. I think it works. I think it works. So, I think if we drop a sapling, I think it should just work. Let's see now. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Bingo. Now, what we could make is we could make this flower called Agricarnation, but we can't actually make it right now because we would need a rune of spring and a rune of fire, and we don't have any nether ward. But basically what this flower would do is it would speed up growth in its area of effect. But as I said, we don't have what we need to make this just yet. So we're going to pass up on that. We don't have to have it, but it would just make this the growth a little bit quicker. Um, but we'll skip on that for right now. All right, we're almost at the point of wrapping this up because we are almost done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a four lens here because now what will happen is we will be putting saplings all the way over here. Now, if this sapling grows, there would be a lock here blocking this pulse. Perfect. Um, so now this pulse will now break those locks to get to this guy right here. Um, yep, they're connected. We need to set up the hourglass because we are now ready to start pulsing. So I'm going to do that because we need to actually let this run for uh, a little bit of time before it will actually be effective. So let me just wait for that to happen. And that will burst out and it will make it to the other side and up here and actually make it through. Wow. Oh, and there you go. So basically what will happen is perfect example. The beam will break blocks except for the leaves, right? So it will make it through like so break any logs that are in the logs will drop and get picked up by this hopper right here. Now, as you see, the beam isn't actually making it all the way up, and that is why I said that it will need some time, because it will need to fill out its internal buffer before it can make it all the way up to the top, because there are some laws, um, I believe, when you get a greater distance. Um, and as you can see, we picked up four logs from this tree, from this hopper right here. Now we need to convert this wood right here into mana, and that is very easy. All right, so we are now onto the chest here. What we will then do is we will place a furnace and a hopper leading into it. So the wood will basically get dropped down here. And then we will need to make a open grate. Wait for that. I need to get out of here. <laughs> for that, we need living wood planks. There we go. And I'm also gonna need some redstone and I'm also gonna need a wooden pressure plate. So what we will do is we're gonna dig a little bit right here. We're gonna have the open crate face down like so. I believe it is facing down now like so. There we go. And then we will make a hover go into here like so. And then redstone just like that because what will then happen is this open crate or actually this hopper will basically take the output and put it in here which will then put it here which will then activate the redstone signal stopping the hopper and this will basically be making a charcoal right now i need to take a look here because these saplings are actually not all of them being planted and i'm not sure as to why. Editing binary here. Um, I'm coming here because I believe I've figured out uh, exactly what is going on. So as you can see, there are two layers. There's a layer here, and then there's a thinner layer here. This is more color, this is more transparent, and I think I know why. I think one of them is the pickup area, and one is the placement area. Because I noticed it picked up uh, saplings that was close to it and placed one all the way over there. So I believe that this thicker area is where it will pick up and the thin area is where it will place. So we will definitely need some more to cover this area. I'm probably going to place another one over there. So I'll have three in total. But yeah, it was just easier to explain it than doing it in text. Now what I need to do is basically make a bunch of these and then place them down there because they need to be taking the coal that gets dispensed or dropped by the, the thing down there and use that to generate mana. And then we need these to get bound to this 
piece right here. I hope this makes sense. I think I want eight in total. Yeah, I'm gonna make eight because why not? All right, I now have six more end of flames and we're gonna be picking up these right here and this fella right there. All right, I did a little bit of a mistake. This hopper is pointing into the wall and not actually into the furnace like it should. That, that, that makes sense. All right, so we are now making charcoal, as you can see right here. We now have charcoal right here. So now I need to place dirt and I need to place you there. And then I need to place these end of flames here. And all of these should be able to pick up the charcoal. So this will basically make it so that it doesn't just drop a stack at a time and then eventually despawns, but only one at a time when these guys can actually pick it up. And that is what this is pretty much. That is pretty much the setup complete. Now, there is one more flower that we could make to basically make it so that I don't have to fuel this. Um, but we will have to make it another time because we will need the Rune of Fire. The Rune of Summer, we pretty much can do, I think. Yeah, we could do that one, but we can't do the Rune of Fire because we need the Nether Ward. And also the Nether Brick. The Nether Brick we could get, but the Nether Ward, it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit more <laughs> complicated because we don't actually have found a fortress yet. So until we have done that, this is pretty much our setup. So yeah, guys, this is our entire setup. Um, now, I didn't really like my original outro, so I am remaking it right here to make it a little bit more simple. Let's run through what this whole thing actually does for us. So we have a mana pool right here, which is taking mana and also... Um, we use it to take mana out to make this whole thing possible, of course. So we have this thing right here with a uh, timer. I don't remember exactly how much this is. I assume maybe 15 seconds, 20 seconds or something. Um, but anyways, this pulse mana every however much this is, sends out a mana pulse, which has a boring lens on it, breaking any locks that there might be right here. That beam then goes around with all of these that are pointing inwards in this area, having a bore lenser, uh, lens on, which will basically remove all the locks, break them, um, which will then get picked up by this hopper hawk, though it will not break the leaves. The leaves, as we can see there, the lock broke and will then get picked up by the hopper hawk. The leaves will not break, they will decay, and their saplings will then get picked up by these random carpus. <laughs> and be replaced and we should be able to see that one get picked up right there and put into the chest and we can now go down so the logs will then get put into this furnace right here that when we manually add fuel to it it will then give us charcoal charcoal is then being extracted by this hover right here and put into this open crate which will then place it right there on the pressure plate and any of these eight uh, end of flames will pick up that charcoal. Now what this does is basically the charcoal sends a redstone signal blocking this hopper from sending any more. In case these are not ready to pick up another one just so we don't waste them and they despawn. This mana spreader right here. There we go. This mana spreader right here takes up any mana these guys produce and put it into the mana pool. Now this thing will only be fully automatic when we have made the exo flame. Um, but as I probably already said, we can't actually make this before we get another ward. Which is what we will be doing in the next episode. In the next episode, guys, we will be finding another fortress. Not only because I want that, but also because I need to get... I need to get Wither Bones. Before I can take on a dragon, I want to have Wither Bones so that I can get Wither Bones shots. So that I can get Wither Bone arrows and also so I can make some dragon stuff such as um if we just go into this section right here i want to make a dragon bone bow and i want to make some dragon bone arrows so i can deal that extra damage uh to any dragons we do so in the next couple of episodes we will be doing stuff with ice and fire which i think a lot of you is going to hopefully enjoy we have been doing a lot of other stuff recently um but i think it is time that we do some stuff with some dragons so stay tuned we are doing that next time but yeah if you have any questions leave them down below um I, again i will leave a link to the video that i follow to make this 
Um, link for that down below in the description. But yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Really hope you have enjoyed, enjoyed. Hope you learned something, potentially, if you're interested in go getting into uh, mana stuff with Batania. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Really hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, join my Discord server link down below. Have a wonderful day and goodbye. Con la nave ruta así, Zapu es